So hello and welcome to a tour of my current development environment. Here I'm going to be giving an overview of the different tools that I use and how I've customized them to fit my needs. So in terms of hardware, I'm currently running an M1 based 13 inch MacBook Pro, meaning that this may be a little bit different than if I was on an Intel based machine. If you want to see my thoughts and a tutorial on how to develop on the Apple Silicon platform, check out my video on that right here. So in this video, I'm going to focus on the software that I use and how I've configured it. But if you want to see a video about the hardware that I use and things like my desk setup, be sure to subscribe and stay tuned. So I keep my environment relatively minimal, opting to use VS Code as my all-purpose editor instead of using different IDEs for different languages. I then use iTerm2 as a terminal emulator, and I've heavily customized both of them. So as you can see here, I really enjoy the Nord color scheme. Uh, if I go ahead and run this script, you'll get a pretty good example of that. Um, but I use it for pretty much everything I can. I also use uh, Meslo LGS nerd font as my monospace font pretty much everywhere. Uh, I've included a link to my dot files in the description, so if you want to go ahead and copy my setup, you can go ahead and do that. So we'll start by taking a look at my terminal right here. So uh, with regards to cosmetics, I use the minimal window theme on iTerm, so if it's smaller, you'll see that it's all one color, there's no separate top bar. And I use the Nord color preset, which is straight from the Nord theme uh, project. So I also have a status bar here at the bottom, you probably can't see it that well, that displays my battery, CPU, RAM usage, and network throughput. Uh, I use ZSH as my shell, but I've added a lot on top of it. So I use OhMyZSH for shell customization, package management, and Power Level 10K as my theme. Uh, all of the theming that I did with Power Level 10K is just done through the initial Power Level 10K uh, customization function where you get with uh, P10K config. Um, so that's pretty much it for that. We can go ahead and now dive into my ZSHRC file if we want to go ahead and get a better idea of what I've done. So if we take a look over here now, um, you can see pretty much everything is normal. Uh, the few differences you may see is on my path, for instance, I have homebrew bin there. Uh, you can go ahead and check out my video on Apple Silicon development to see why I have that. Uh, everything else here is pretty much basic, but then I do have these plugins here, uh, these three in specific right here, the different ZSH plugins. Uh, so ZSH completions provides additional completion definitions for ZSH, which is really nice. So you can just tab into things and they'll generally work. Uh, and then ZSH auto suggestions is what you saw earlier, how it was pre-filling my uh, text with things that I maybe, I maybe want to run as a command. Uh, and then ZSH syntax highlighting highlights your syntax in place in a shell. So both of those are copying functionality from the fish shell actually, uh, but without all of the weirdness of using fish. So I find this is sort of the best of both worlds on that end. So now uh, we're already in VS Code, so we can move over to that. You can see I'm using Meslo LGS here as my font yet again, and I'm going to go over some of the extensions that I use. Uh, I'm going to focus on the ones that just have the sort of general editor experience and not the ones that have to do with specific languages. Uh, so if we go through there, you can see starting off with better comments. Uh, this is a great extension from the developer Aaron Bond, and pretty much what it does is it adds colorization uh, to your comments. Uh, if you take a look here, it's very nice. It adds things like that, uh, and it's extremely customizable. You can add different tokens for the comments if you want, and you can even change the colors uh, very easily, which of course I've done to match the Nord theme that I have going on everywhere else. Uh, so the next thing is probably my favorite extension right here. This is Bracket Pair Colorizer. Two. Uh, the one version is essentially the same thing, but using a different engine, which is slower. Uh, so you can see the same exact thing here. It's super helpful for if you have a bunch of nested brackets and you can't figure out which ones match. Uh, it especially saved me when I was having to do things in Scheme for school, because that is just a mess of parentheses and brackets. Um, so I, of course, also customized that to use Nord-based colors instead of the ones that it ships with. Uh, again, highly customizable, really great app. Uh, so then we have a bunch of language specific ones and then we get to git ignore. So this is again a really small, really nice extension that pretty much what it adds is support for being able to pull from the general GitHub based git ignore uh, repository, which has lists for pretty much every language you could think of. Uh, it lets you pull all of those into your local git ignore to save you the time of having to go find that and copy it and do that if your tools that you're using for development don't set that up for you automatically already. Uh, next up, we have GitLens. So GitLens is great. It adds a ton of features to the version control uh, that VS Code provides for Git. Um, my favorite of which is the fact that it has Git blames. So anything that you have that's part of a uh, Git repository, you'll be able to go and every time you're editing a line, you can see uh, sort of darkened out to the side who wrote that line, what commit it was a part of, 
and all of that, which I find extremely useful for figuring out when I did a certain change, what that change might have been a part of if I forgot to comment it, or just who to ask about a certain piece of code if I'm working in a broader context. Uh, so next up down here, we have indent rainbow. So indent rainbow, again, sort of the same sort of vibe as bracket colorizer, how what it's generally doing is making it a lot more easy and semantic to read your code and see different levels of things. So this does what bracket colorizer does for brackets for indents. So each level of indent then is going to have a color. And from that, you can see uh, very easily, especially for languages like Python where that stuff matters, uh, what level of indent something is on without having to check, oh, is this two spaces, is this four spaces, whatever, things like that, uh, depending on your tabs versus spaces ideas there. I'm not going to get into that right now. Um, so next up down here, the next thing I want to talk about, uh, again, of course you saw Nord, is Path IntelliSense. So Path IntelliSense is great. It adds uh, completion for your file system essentially when you're writing things like that. So if you put in dot slash, it'll start filling in with all of the other things in your directory and you can very easily navigate through your folders without having to go check your file structure somewhere else. Uh, and then finally, for extensions that don't have to do with any specific language, uh, we have VS Code icons. Um, VS Code icons, I just really enjoy having a much more semantic thing here. You can see in this tutorial, it's about to do it. Um, so if you go ahead and have that, it's much more semantic. You can see what your different folders might mean. You can see what your different files are written in language-wise. Uh, and I just find that a lot, like, a lot more useful for development than just having little file icons. Uh, having ones that actually mean something and I can tell what they're doing. Um, so that's pretty much the extent of my VS Code configuration. As I said before, it's quite minimal. Uh, in terms of other tools, I obviously don't have Docker Kubernetes yet, uh, as I discussed in my Apple Silicon video. And the other sort of tools that I have on my computer at all, I have Conda for my environment management stuff and Postico, which I use for Postgres databases. But other than that, pretty much everything I do goes through either the terminal or VS Code. Um, so that's pretty much it for my development environment as of now. The only changes I anticipate seeing in the future is the addition of Docker and Kubernetes and the things that sort of surround that in the future when they're available. Uh, but until then, I am extremely happy with my setup. Again, if you do want to grab it, I am linking my dot files in the description so you can copy my setup pretty much exactly. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more from me in the future and share this video with anyone you think might be interested. And I'll see you again soon.